Bueno, vamos a dar comienzo a la segunda parte de la lección de, de Laura Arisaca. Concretamente, en, este, en esta segunda lección eh, se centrará más en la medición y aplicaciones del capital social en Finlandia. Y bueno, dedicaremos también más o menos, pues. Eh, tres cuartos de hora dejando tres cuartos de hora de exposición depende de lo que ya tarde y unos diez minutos de preguntas o comentarios okay here's here's the outline for the second lesson so again I will give some domestic background and back, background information for the measurements and tell about work has, that has been done in Statistics Finland and describe social capital and health study that has been in Finland, done in Finland, the measurement of regional economy, <coughs> then social capital in Finland projects, possible data sources and there's also Academy of Finland research pro projects projects going on. And for the general background, social capital, you could say that it came came to Finland in 1997. Then people were writing about the concept of social capital. For example, articles on social capital, a concept worth of exploring and the welfare state as investment in human and social capital. And actually, uh, this man called Hyppä, Markku de Hyppä, this Finnish researcher, has done health study uh, concerning social capital issues since, since the year 1990, but he didn't use the term concept of social capital, not before that, 1997 also. And again, uh, as international interest, also our national experience in Finland originates from concerns of economic theory. There were economists who were at first interested about social capital issues, and also this theory of endogenous growth and its applications in regional economics were studied in the late 1990s. And the pioneer figure in Finnish national debate on social capital was Dr. Reino Jerpe, uh, who had this first article listed in here. He emphasized the usefulness of the concept of social capital in economic analysis. And research in social capital issues gradually gathered steam around the turn of the mil millennium. And then uh, since that, there has been a lot, lots of different studies on concerning social capital and its measurement has been done. But again, most, most of the studies around social capital have, re have related to more <coughs> sociological issues such as trust, networks, and participation in civic in activi ac action. And as in international uh, surveys, also in Finland, the economic debate is a little behind the sociological debate. <coughs> and although there has been lots of studies on social capital, not many population based studies have been done. Usually studies are more concerned on certain subgroup of the population. And my former director has, in Statistics Finland, has been active in the field of uh, social capital since uh, 1997 when there was organized some international congress on this issue and 
our researchers uh, and we have experiments in statistics Finland with introducing social capital into economic statistics and also some tests about the usability of time use survey in the early 2000 decade and we have also produced many articles on the measurement of social capital and we also produced one article for the, for this UN seminar two weeks ago with, with the former boss of mine and me we, we made this paper and the social capital matrix of surveys was done in 1990, uh, 2002 <laughs> when we listed suitable data sources for the social capital measurement Uh, the most promising uh, way or field of the study is uh, social capital and health study, he health study in Finland. And this has been done by this man, Markku Tehyp and, and his colleagues. And they, are, they have done this from, uh, they started this study in 1990 and they are still continuing this one. They have compared the Finnish and Swedish speaking population, populations living in, in coastal Estonia, uh, in western coast of Finland. And it seems that uh, Swedish speakers, there are about 5% of, of the population in Finland are native uh, Swedish speaking. And, and the other 95% or 94% <coughs> speaks Finnish. And these Swedish speak, speakers, they, they live longer, they are healthier, they are, more hap they are happier, and everything good. <laughs> and they have better functional capacity than the Finnish speaking population living in the same area, in this western coast. So that's why this Hypa was very interested and he was trying to find out that what is explaining this difference because there, there should have not been these differences between this language and it seem, seems that social capital explains this difference the results show that social capital is associated with good health when some, are, some of the most common health rela related factors Uh, are controlled for and these factors are age, gender, weight, smoking, family incomes, alcohol use and chronic illnesses. And uh, in these studies uh, social capital was measured by using social participation, the number of friends who provided help and trust. And one example was that a Swedish-speaking Finnish, they, they sing in choirs, and that's why they are happier. <laughs> and then more about this regional economy and social capital, which I already told her last, last, in last, last lesson. And my colleague Aku Alanin in Statistics <coughs> Finland has made studies concerning, concerning the relationship between social capital and regional economy. And it was also described on your papers, so a little more if you, if you are interested. Um, he has done research on regional economics and you could say that yeah, this research can be done at the level of civil society by measuring people's activities and opinions or at the level of organizations by serving intra and inter-organizational con connections, for example. This applies equally to social capital at the civil society 
and the organizational level. Still, these both civil society level and organizational level are problematic because same measurement tools can yield completely different results for social capital when applied at different regional levels. And reliable indicators are much harder to find at regional level than at the national level. And it's also difficult to compare these results. And a very big issue, issue in this kind of measurement is that at what regional level would it make most sense to measure social capital? Is the good level municipality or bigger region, sub-region, major region? Like how many, into how many different regions should, for example, Finland <coughs> divide? And and what, on what these levels you, you are able to measure both social capital issues and then these economical issues and economic figures. They are very difficult to find out from, for example, maybe there is some figures from municipality levels uh, in the economics field, but on the contrary, in, in social capital measurements there. Usually there isn't because the population is not so big in these, inter, uh, in these questionnaire materials in the level of municipality. <coughs> Here are some pilot measures of regional economies. The first study was my colleague Alanen and Beconen was made in, in the year 2000. Can regional economic growth be explained by social capital? Um, they selected uh, 12 provinces on the measurement. And provinces were selected to be the unit of analysis because, because there was data avail available on GDP and investments how they was measuring this economic growth. And indicators of social capital was used. Like it was, again, it was surprisingly difficult to find suitable indicators. There are not surveys that make it possible to com compare across time and regions. And they used two indicators that was describing positive trust and two that was de that were describing negative trust so both positive and ne negative measures of social capital was used the choice was based on content and applicability as well as on the availability of data and uh, these measures where uh, political trust, for example, electoral turnout, membership numbers, and participation. And then suicides, they were regarded as negative manifestation of social trust. And in Finland, there are re remarkable differences in suicide mortality between different regions. So this is the reason why it was used as a negative measure. And then the third one was participation in associations. And then the fourth one, uh, crime, was taken as an indicator of social distrust. And of course, you can question these used measures, but at least there has been some, something done. And it can be tentative concluded that social capital, to some extent, statistically explains economic growth. Still, it is, it is much harder to establish whether there is a connection real, in rea reality. And social capital did correlate statistically with economic growth in the 1970s, but in the <coughs> 1980s, the link was uh, it, the link disappeared, and 
1990s was really difficult for other reasons because there was a quite bad economic depression time in the beginning of 1990 century in Finland, so it changes all the figures in trust and suicides and everything. Uh, one possible interpretation is that during periods of slow economic growth, the role of social capital is bigger than in good times. So you could say that social capital may explain economic growth, but not very hardly, because it still needs more measurements. And the second research done by this, uh, my colleague Alanen was the search for subjective indicators of social capital at the regional level. And these public measures of regional economics suggest that for purposes of regional analysis, it would be important to include both the positive and the negative aspects of social capital. At least my colleague Alanen thinks really this. Uh, questionnaire responses, for, for instance, can be interpreted as partly negative and partly positive if it turns out that some respondents have no social capital at all. An example is provided by the search for subjective indicators of social capital at regional level, uh, where it was tried to ad identify the individuals with very, very low levels of social capital and also with a very high level of social capital. And this group of people who considered to represent negati negative social capital because the absence of social rela relations and trust. So they had the level of, a uh, very low level of social capital. And in this study, uh, the researchers tried to find out differences in social capital and the measures were participation in voluntary <coughs> activities, friendships and trusts. And this was done on the basis of survey, survey material. And as a result, differences in social capital are found to be remarkable. The most powerful explana explanation was the respondent's so socioeconomic status. On the other hand, it wasn't able to prove that there was a connection between economic success and region social flourish. However, the interpretation of the results proved uh, quite problematic uh, because, for example, they found that uh, two sub-regions, for instance, uh, they, they, the proportion, uh, they have had higher levels of both positive and negative social capital. So that's why the inter interpretation was quite difficult. And as I said, there is a research program in Finland funded by the Academy of Finland. And it's working at the moment. It, it started in the year 2004, and we should have a lot of new material, new results, and everything during this year or after this year, after this research program has ended. And this program comprises 31 research programs. I have listed them, but there are so many, so maybe you can't see this. You can try, but... <laughs> so I have divided these These projects into uh, quite many of these programs, concerns about trust <coughs> and then social capital in general, and social capital in health, social capital in work communities, and also uh, social capital 
in the view of organization and business. I, I don't know, is it possible to make it clear? Well, my main point is that uh, when we were discussing about <coughs> this, we should know more about the nature of social capital and understand what is behind this issue and when we are, we have to know what is behind when we are measuring this and comparing the results. So I hope we will find out more during, after we have finished these, these programs. And this program is also organizing an international congress on this issue, social capital and networks of trust. It will be held on October. And also my abstract was taken there, so I hope I will be more clever after this congress <laughs> about these results. And I could say about this program, research program, that uh, it has been the most popular way in the field of social capital is to consider social capital from a theoretical view. Like Finnish people are quite theoretical and, and also they also do quite, quite a lot, lot of qualitative research. So maybe it really gives something to understand the nature of social capital. Of course, of course there are empirical studies and quantitative statistical studies also, but I think the mi minority is quantitative studies. Mm. And I think the reason why I'm, I'm here is our social capital projects in Statistics Finland. It was going through in 19, 2005 and 2006. And the background for our program was the growing interest in the measurement, so in social, in the measurement social capital with official statistics. And my former director thought that we should also do something about the measurement of social capital in Finland because statistical offices in UK, Australia, Canada and New Zealand all already had done something and also international organizations were interested as I already told. Our purpose was to examine how social capital can be measured with existing official st statistics and to co consider the usefulness of this statistical data material. And the final product was this review, Social Capital in Finland. It was published uh, first in, in, in Finnish and then in English in, in the September in 1960. Uh, 2006. Here's the contents of our publication. So this review uh, comprises 11 short and compact articles about social capital. It wasn't uh, completely research. It was supposed only to give some examples on how, how you can use these different data material that already exists. So we weren't able to measure social capital very completely. But I will give later some examples from our results. And you could say that articles cover all essential facets of social capital 
such as civic and social participation, social networks, reciprocity and trust. And we also examined some special themes uh, such as this social capital and health, social capital in workplace communities, and information society issues. Uh, social capital is typically understood as being the property of some community, even though this property is also in, the case, in this case measured using observations about individuals. And in this publication, uh, communities are understood widely. <coughs> communities with the same interests, work communities and networks among companies also, like business relations. But there are also some aspects of social capital that we couldn't measure. For example, <coughs> norms and values. And here are listed these data sources that we data sources that we used. They can be divided into survey data and register data and other statistics. And population coverage in survey data is nationally representative, except in learning regions study, which covers seven different regions from different parts of Finland, but the others are population-based. And routinely compiled statistics and various re registers contain data on substantive issues associated with this social capital, uh, such as voting activity and number of civic organizations. There is also plenty of information relating to social capital in statistics uh, on, for example, crime, education, and health. But for example, crime wasn't used in this survey, but, uh, but my colleague used this crime statistics earlier in regional economics. And although administrative registers uh, contain wide-ranging and extensive information in Finland, aspects of social capital can can be only partially measured by exploiting them and other ordinary statistics. So the main weight in the measurement is given to the survey data. And many aspects concern, concerning the act, actions and attitudes of in, individuals, which can only be measured with different questionnaire surveys. And the most extensive surveys of these are the latest survey, time use survey, and health 2000. And I have to say also that none of these has been collected for the purpose of the measurement of social capital. I won't be showing these. So now I will keep, introduce you some of our results from, from this publication and from this <coughs> project. And first, uh, trust. And according to the latest survey, trust seems to be very widespread in Finland. For 82, uh, it was 82% of the respondents agree with the statement, generally speaking, most people can be trusted. It's almost the same question than in, in the World Body Survey I showed you earlier. And women and men had comparable views. Uh, and according to, the age, according to the age, older people are less trusting than younger age groups. Uh, for example, 71% of people aged 65 and over were trusting other people, but 88% of younger people trust in other people. And according to this uh, latest survey, uh, this trust in other people is more widespread, widespread than indicated by the World Value Survey that I showed you earlier. 
in World Value Survey, trust was only uh, uh, only 48 percent of the people in Finland trusted other people in the year 1996. But according <coughs> to this, the figure was 82, so it's much higher. It's partly because the question was formulated a little differently, and because this economic depression in 1990s. In this figure, is so the trust in government. It was asked like this: a person like me does not have say in what the powers that we do. And according to this. 33% of the respondents agreed with this statement fully or to some extent. Like you can see that there is a trust in government or trust government particularly much. So they are separated in this figure. Levels of this institutional tr trust do not differ between men and women, but clear differences are seen between different age, age groups. Confidence declines with advancing age, again, and most particularly from, from the age group 55 to 64 onwards. And education significantly increases confidence. Among respondents with primary education, 18% have confidence in government, and those with the higher education, the figure is 59%. But the differences are not as clear if we look only at those people with particularly high levels of confidence. In this figure, there's a participation in, voluntary, in different voluntary organizations uh, in the year 19, 1981, 1991, and 2002. And according to this, 52% of people in Finland have participated in the activity of an as association, organization, or like during the past uh, year. And figure was same 10 years earlier, but has come down since the 1980s. Men used to be more active than women, but there is no difference be between the genders today. And activity among the oldest people well, over 75 has grown since 1980s. And the most common type of social participation is being member of a sports club, which is that 23% uh, of the respondents have, have been doing the past year in a member in, uh, active in a, a sports club. And activity in political associations has dropped from 6% in 1981 to only 2% in, in 2002. And this civic activity is getting down everywhere, I think so, also in, in the US and also other countries. And this uh, sports club and other hobby, hobby clubs are maybe getting more common or some kind of laser, laser clubs. And here is uh, involvement in association according to age. And the youngest respondents were the most active participants. Although involvement in the youngest age groups had decreased to some extent in, in the late 20 years, or during, during the late 20 years. Participation in the, po in the population um, over 75 years has steadily increased since the 1980s. These people are most often involved in the work of pensioners, associations, civil defense associations and religious associations. But according to this, you could say that activity has come, come down since 1980s. 
and this was the most popular form of social participation and again involvement of young adults uh, is the most highest and it has increased <coughs> and participation in sports and exercise clubs remains most characteristically built it's a laser activity for children and youths. And all the people are not, of course, they are not so active in this field. Here are some numbers in this, in this table from election statistics. And first, I could say something about voting in the intention according to laser survey. So voting intention now relatively high in the whole population. 78% of people were intending to vote in the next e election. And for example, people, people's trust, trust in different social institutions may be re reflected in their intention to vote. In, 19, uh, in 2002, 93% of active participants in associations said uh, that they were going to vote in the next municipal or parliamentary elections. But still, actual voter turnout is not, however, as high as voting intention figures. Like if 78% if of, of the people say that they are going to vote in next e election, but the total figure is much lower. For example, in municipal elections in, in the year 2004, total percent was only 59%, and in parliamentary elections, uh, the number was 70%. And in parliamentary elections, the level of voter turnout in Finland has been declining for many decades. And the same trend is evident in municipal elections. Voting levels were, were the highest in parliamentary elections during the, 60, during the 60s, and also same in municipal elections during the 60s and 70s. And since then, it, the figure has come down. And this volunteering, neighborly help, and socializing is being studied on the basis of time use survey. It has been used widely, for example, in Australia and also in, in the UK. It has quite many, uh, lots of questions concerning social capital issues. And according to this time use survey, uh, in Finland, people spent almost one hour on social capital activities. And these social capital activities were you, uh, divided into this volunteering, neighborly help, and socializing with friends. And most of this time, of this one hour, was taken up to socializing. It was 42 minutes, which is here defined as spending time with friends at home, in cafes, restaurants, or elsewhere, and visiting people. And 10 minutes were used to, to helping neighbors, and only five seconds in organizational activity. But uh, it, we have to remember that it was hours and minutes during one day, so during one day there isn't maybe any organizational activity. By this figure, it was only five seconds. Here is uh, some vol volunteering figures, like participation in volunteering uh, during four weeks. It refers to unpaid work that is done for a group or an or organization. 
and according to this figure, 29 percent of the population had particip participated in voluntary work during four weeks. And men, men are a little more active than women, and volunteering uh, was most common in the age group uh, of 35 to 54 years old. And also among people with a high level of education, employed people and students. <coughs> uh, among men, the most common form of volunteering was working for a sports or exercise club or organization. And the next comes uh, volunteering in local residence associations, village, village councils, and so on. And women were most the mo among women, the most popular forms of volunteering were sports and exercise clubs, also as men's local residence associations, village councils, or housing corporations, and also re religious associations, even though Finnish people are not very religious. And here is neighborly help that has been given by women and men. And when we are comparing this informal help between men and women, there are clear differences, as can be supposed also. Women help more uh, with childcare, shopping and running errands, cooking and cleaning. And men usually offered help with repairs and building work, transport and removals, shopping and running errands with gardening and snow removal. Because in Finland you have to, there is a lots of snow during the winter time. <coughs> the neighborly help offered by men and women differs in much the same way in, as their participation in household chores in general. And people who lived in in densely populated areas, for example in cities, they did help others other households somewhat more than those living in sparsely populated areas in, in the countryside. Maybe because there isn't so many neighbors, at least they don't live very near. There can be, a, for example, a kilometer to your neighbor. And in this figure is some kind of international comparis comparison according to this uh, time use survey. And this figure shows uh, time used on social capital activities in nine different European Union countries. Social capital activities took up the most amount of time in Germany, followed by Sweden and Finland, and also Slovenia and, and the UK. The single activity for which the highest figures were recorded was socializing, uh, which in this case it includes social interaction with family and telephone conversations also. And people in Germany and Finland, as well as in France and Estonia, spend the most amount of time <coughs> on organizational activities and neighborly help. And people in most other countries devoted more time in, to neighborly help than to work in association and organizations. There's also a uh, little different results in when you have used other data sources. Because in, in this case, Finland has quite, fi uh, quite high figure, but I don't remember, was it the European Social Survey? or some other survey uh, where Finland was much lower level on this comparison. But usually Sweden has quite high figures in social capital. Here, and here is some new results concerning social capital and health perceived good or rather good. 
Uh, this fi figure describes uh, model adjusted prevalences of health perceived as good or rather good according to social support, participation, and trust among Finnish population who are over 30, 30 or over in the year 2000. And uh, this mes uh, social capital was measured using uh, a total of 36 different variables. These were chosen on the basis of the of they or other similar indicators having been used in other studies earlier. <coughs> so these are quite commonly used in different surveys. And in factor analysis, these variables were found to constitute uh, three different dimensions, which are shown. So in this figure, there were social participation, social support, and trust. The results seem to su suggest that social capital and health <coughs> are correlated with each other. Socially active people have good perceived health more often than those who do not engage in social activities. Trust and good perceived health correlated with each other. Also people who received social support uh, rate their own health as good more often than people who do not get any help or social support. And according to the results, again, these tri three dimensions were clearly correlated with perceived health when age, gender, chronic illness, and two other dimensions of social capital were controlled for. Those people who were actively involved in various social activities had, uh, had the most trust in other people, and those who had a good social network also reported good perceived health. Uh, but the association observed between social support and good perceived health was not as strong as the associations between participation or trust and health. But still, the difference was significant. And then some results according to the workplace communities. In this study, uh, social capital was investigated at three levels within the workplace community. The level of work colleagues, which is also horizontal social capital, the level of immediate supervisors, and the level of organizational management, which can be understood as vertical social capital. In studies of workplace communities, the outcome of social capital might be job satisfaction, efficiency, or le low level of absenteeism, or high level of innovativeness, or commitment to the organization. And in this case, social capital in the workplace community can be said to produce welfare and well-being in work and overall economic efficiency. Some of the results uh, suggest that social capital in workplace improves the organization of work, increases the proportion of employees who are very satisfied with their job, reduces fa fatigue, and reduces the proportion of those who are reluctant to uh, going to work. And fatigue occurs more often in, in workplaces where employees feel that management is un uninterested in its employees and where the pro proportion of employees who, we, who feel reluctant uh, going to work at least once a week is higher. And the proportion of very satisfied employees is higher among respondents who say that they are supported than among those who are not supported by their colleagues or supervisors. Oh, boss. <coughs> and in this final figure, I have described uh, uh, net, uh, different networks <coughs> among companies. Uh, uh, you could say also the in inter-enterprise relations. 
in five different countries. Uh, this was uh, done on the basis of Eurostat ad hoc survey on inter-enterprise relations done in, in the year 2003. And while comparing five participation European Union countries, the existence of intercompany relations appear, appears to be, be the most widespread in Finland and in Sweden. The rates were lowest in Denmark and especially in France and Germany. In Finland, more than 80% of the companies with 50 or more employees uh, said that they have intercompany relations. In Sweden, the share was 70%, and in Germany, about 30%. And according <coughs> to these results, intercompany relations influence competitiveness through, for example, cost reductions, increased flexibility, and cooperation. In Finland and Denmark, 65%, and in other countries, about 50% of enterprises estimated that intercompany relations really increased their competitiveness. I, I think this is my final slide. So. Uh, my colleague also has done some social demographic uh, study, uh, uh, study of the social demographic variation of social capital. And uh, this is the same person who has studied this social capital in Finland, which I saw the one figure. And in this study, they found uh, these uh, three different dimensions of social capital, social support, social participation and networks, and trust and reciprocity. And social capital was ana analyzed by according to age, gender, education, living arrangements, income, and type of region. And on the basis of this study, it seems, again, that social capital it seems to be accumulating. Those who are young, well-educated, rich, and married seems to have a high level of social capital. So those who are doing well, they also have social capital. Uh, the type of region was not so good explainer, but age, age and sex, and also education is very good in explaining social capital variation. So now I'm thanking for your attention. And here's a picture of my lovely dog, who is eight months old. She's a Spanish water dog, <laughs> who really would like to be here on the sea. <laughs> Muchas gracias, Laura, por esta segunda exposición de la medición más concreta en, eh, en Finlandia de Capital Social. Y tenemos algunos minutos para poder eh, comentar, exponer o preguntar lo que, eh, lo que nos haya sugerido esta segunda parte de la intervención de Laura Lisaka. Bueno, si no hay... Ah, sí. Hemos es. citado un, un estudio de Alan Pekonen en el que mide el, el, el capital social desde su versión o visión negativa y, y positiva con, con cuatro indicadores. ¿Cómo o, o sea, se operacionaliza en este estudio eh, eh, la visión negativa y positiva de, de, del capital? Uh, did you mean this uh, regional economic research? Uh, había cuatro variables: eh, la participación electoral, el suicidio, la participación en asociaciones y la criminalidad. 
y de esas cuatro variables pues eh, había una visión positiva del capital social y otra negativa eh, que, eh, eh, por ejemplo el, eh, eh, cómo se convierte o, eh, pues un nivel de criminalidad en capital positivo o negativo eh, cómo se da ese paso Uh, I think the researcher here um, uh, just a second I try to find something if I have written here yeah the crime was taken as an indicator of social distrust I think these measures are quite problematic and You have to really use your imagination, like understanding and uh, getting these uh, to consider about social capital. So, uh, but I could say that there wasn't any better indicators available because this was uh, done on the basis of of register data. So this. My colleague didn't have any survey data at that at this time, but in many cases crime can be understood. Maybe it's mostly understood as an outcome of social capital more than uh, one indicator of social capital, because it's of, of course it's very important uh, to make differences between the indicators of social capital or the sources and then the outcomes. And I could say that this is more describing the outcome. Like uh, in the areas where the crime levels are high, in usually these areas social capital level is lo low. suicidio se utilice como, como resultado de, de una falta de capital social o es, podríamos estar de acuerdo en que el crimen, la delincuencia hay una asociación estrecha con, al menos en la teoría con las redes de capital social que puedan haber en los barrios, en las ciudades pero sorprende que el suicidio se esté utilizando como, como un indicador negativo de capital social sobre todo porque a nivel macro crea una contradicción en el concepto. Los países escandinavos eh, sois los que tenéis capital social más desarrollado y a la vez la tasa más elevada de suicidios. Entonces, mmm, aquí habría algo que, que no, no acabaría de cuadrar. Es decir, no es, no es muy consistente teóricamente la, la asunción de que el suicidio representa un indicador de debilidad de capital social. That's good news. At least in Finland, the suicide rates are high. <laughs> I don't know other Nordic countries. I think in Sweden, the rate is not, not that high than in Finland. <laughs> But you are correct. <laughs> ¿Alguna otra pregunta o sugerencia? Sí, sí eh, yo tengo una, una impresión general de que eh, el capital social, más que como motor de desarrollo económico, sirve algo para medir un poquito el bienestar de la sociedad, ¿no? de la población, de los colectivos. Seguramente es algo más fácil, por lo menos en el, en el mundo de las ideas, de la teoría, pues eh, medir de alguna forma algo intangible como puede ser el bienestar, ¿no? Pero 
Quizá la parte más débil, desde mi punto de vista, es un poquito que el capital social medirlo como elemento, como motor, como instrumento de desarrollo económico, etcétera, etcétera, ¿no? Es verdad que existe esa dicotomía a la hora de definir un poco el bienestar de un colectivo determinado, pero que quizá las dificultades se estriban en que como motor o como instrumento, herramienta de desarrollo económico, pues eh, es algo más débil, ¿no? Como impresión general, ¿eh? And you are correct, and in many cases, uh, the reason why social capital is so in interesting and popular is that uh, in this way uh, it can be uh, measured about general welfare in different regions or groups. And uh, I think. You were talking about that social capital should be measured more in economics and so on, and I agree. Because social capital is a form of capital, so we really need to do this more. antes, sino de varios comentarios que han salido en esta sesión y en la anterior, yo creo que eh, entre el público estamos teniendo un error. Estamos confundiendo bienestar y capital social. Son dos cosas totalmente diferentes. O sea, el, el bienestar, sea la felicidad, como se ha dicho antes, o el bienestar objetivo, eso se vive de una manera y, y tiene un significado. El capital es un capital, igual que existe el económico, el humano, existe el capital social que puede ser un instrumento para mejorar el bienestar o no, dependerá del uso que se haga de él. Pero no es, no es que está saliendo en varias ocasiones una confusión entre capital social y bienestar. No es lo mismo, no tiene nada que ver una cosa con la otra. Bueno, pues agradeciendo a todos, yo creo que este tipo de comentarios, agradeciendo a Laura eh, sus exposiciones, pues yo creo que acabaríamos ya esta segunda parte y eh, nos juntaríamos a las doce y cuarto para la siguiente intervención a cargo de Alasne Mujica. Vale.